So we're getting to the end of the harvest now. We're at the back of the block and we're almost done. And we're in one of the areas that I'd kind of marked off as one of the groups for the group selection. And what that means is that we have an area of mature and really declining fir trees about 50 feet by 50 feet that we're going to be clearing and creating a small opening. Now there's one feature here that I had actually pointed out in the timber marking video when I was marking all this out. And there's a really nice little spruce here behind this fir. And it's gonna be a bit of a challenge to protect this while I'm filling all the timber around it. Part of that is because this is literally right next to the stump. It's growing through the space of the root collar there. Um, but also as I fill all the timber around it, there's a potential for it to get crushed. So I'm really going to take my time and take a great deal of caution in felling these trees to try to protect this. Now, uh, this is all a bit extreme perhaps <laughs> to save just one little tree, but I really value spruce. I want more of it on my property. And um, you know, so far we've been doing a really great job retaining spruce and protecting these, these uh, saplings, but I want to ensure that we can get as much of it as possible for the future. And so I want to protect this so it can grow and thrive in a new environment of increased sunlight. Now, I have to be very careful about the order I do things in. The first order of business, there's a dead fir here that's leaning on an ash, and I just need to get that out of the way. So as we fall trees around it, uh, nothing hits it, and this dead tree acts in an unpredictable manner that could be unsafe. So I wanna make sure I get rid of that. From there, I have this tree here, which I'm gonna fell in this direction, and then I'm gonna get rid of this spruce in the direction of um, this tree, which will then be gone. And from there, everything should be fairly easy to uh, fell in such a way that it leaves this area relatively undisturbed. So let's give it a shot. So the first tree I'm actually going to be felling is this fir here. And the reason I had marked this off, as it might be obvious, there is a seam with a lot of raw on the inside here. So we know that the structure of the tree is compromised at least to a degree, which adds a, a uh, increased degree of danger to the felling. The other thing we have to consider is that it's leaning forward by probably, the top of the crown is probably forward about two to three feet relative to the base of the tree. So when I'm choosing a felling direction, I don't really want to fell it in a direction where it's not leaning, especially if it's already compromised. That's just going to add an extra element of risk and unpredictability to the felling process. So my plan here is to cut the notch this way and I might have to cut it a little deeper because I wanna make sure that the hinge has usable uncompromised material. So I'll probably be cutting my hinge about this deep and uh, felling it in the direction which it's leaning. And given other experiences with felling fur on this property, the rot on the inside is generally not as bad as what it seems on the outside. So I don't doubt that if we just cut in a little further, we're gonna get some good material for that hinge and keep the tree controlled all the way to the ground. So let's give it a shot. Got a little pinch between two fur there, but uh, I can get that down easily. All right, so this is the tricky one and it's back leaning a little bit, so I'll have to use a wedge. But uh, the spruce is on the other side, so I should be able to cut my notch just fine. And then I gotta be really careful doing a bore cut. And I'll just take that real carefully back to avoid hitting the spruce. 
and uh, get my wedge in, and probably use a filling lever to finish it off. I think I should be able to do it. That's what happens when you feather your saw too much. As expected, it's filling liver time. Gorgeous. So one thing that's pretty cool about this tree is when I uh, cut it down, on the inside there's a little bit of rot, but the uh, it has kind of exposed the old core of the tree, if that makes sense. So it's about a 50 year old tree and some of the wood around kind of its sapling form, I'd say, has rotted, but you can still see the little branches 
and uh, it, it goes in there about a foot and you can just see the little whirls of uh, when this tree was just a little seedling. I don't know how, how or why that happened. I've never seen that before, but it's really cool. Uh, it's amazing things you can see in the woods when you're cutting down trees. And most importantly, I was able to save this spruce with zero damage to my saw. I did actually end up pinching it a little bit as I was approaching this area uh, because the weight of the tree started to press down on the saw and I was feathering it too much. But that's no problem. That's why I put my wedge in initially. Um, but, you know, this tree is now spared. And assuming that I can not fall any trees on top of it for the rest of the, the area, which I think I should be able to do no problem, this will be a very vigorous and healthy tree going forward. And I'm happy about that. Definitely worth the time to, you know, work it with a little bit of finesse and, and care. Well, I finished up that group and just in time because dusk has set in, as you can probably tell. So it's good to get that out of the way. And of course, I was able to save my little spruce buddy here. But one thing that was a little unfortunate about this area is pretty much every tree had at least, we'll say at least five feet of rot up through the butt, which is pretty odd for this stand. For the most part, a lot of the rot that's been in the trees has cleared up after, we'll say two feet but the, the rot was pretty extensive in these trees, which I think is a pretty good sign that I made the right decision in removing this, uh, this kind of cohort here. Of course, one of the goals of this harvest is that we want to improve the, the value of the growth. So the trees that are growing, we wanna make sure that uh, they're the most sound, they're putting on the most value. And if a fir tree is rotten, it's not gonna be growing that valuable wood because a lot of that wood on the butt of the tree is just not sellable, right? And that's where it's putting on the most growth. So I definitely made the right decision here. And um, I actually noticed too, there's another little cedar sapling down there. Uh, there's of course a spruce, there's a pole size spruce over that way. This is going to be a really nice area for regeneration and uh, for the, the growth of the residual stems. I also wanna put an owl house on this property and there's a nice little sugar maple back there that I think is a pretty good candidate. I still have to give that a little bit of thought though. So anyway, I probably have one full day left of this harvest and then I'll be done. I will admit I'm starting to get a little bit fatigued, but at the same time, I'm gonna be sad when this is over. This has been just a great amount of fun and uh, it's really been a dream come true in many ways. So anyway, stick around, still more to come. See you next time guys.